So I've recently added just a few things to my programming language Rio. I can almost pretend I can do things in the language now. In this example program, I've exported main, where I describe the numbers 2, negative 1, and 0. To describe, I need an int32, and I print a description. The description branches such that less than 0 is negative, greater than 0 is positive, and otherwise I get 0. I provide the value here. And this is just a test function I also explored with along the way. We can compile it. That goes to WebAssembly or WASM. I can run it, or I can just do both at once. And to look a bit more here at some equivalences, instead of first defining this variable message, I could just provide the value directly. Or alternatively, I could even forego the body and just provide a single expression. Or Instead of using this infix notation, I could call a separate function. And by the way, I don't plan to provide arbitrary infix definitions to user space. So these are actually in the grammar and syntax of the parsing. But I could say less i zero, just to show various things that actually do work already in the language, where that value also has an expression of i less than zero. I can also be explicit about return types, where I've used the type name text rather than string or the term claim rather than bool. Eh, I don't know if I'll be that creative in the future. That's the terms I've used right now. And I guess just to make sure that we know this is actually running new versions of the program, let's change it. So now we should have two negatives and a zero. And that's what we get, two negatives and a zero. And we're gonna dig a bit into what this means here, because the branch operation isn't hard-coded syntax in the language. It's actually a function that happens to have built-in support in the compiler for specialized WASM generation. And this is a list of pairs where the with keyword says a list is coming up ahead. Before we get much further, I'll bring up my wild source again, because as a reminder, I don't actually have any error detection in the compiler process right now. And I wanna be very flexible what I can handle. I plan to add error reporting as a future feature. So here I actually lex or tokenize out negative numbers and I gave some examples of not quite negative integers in the wild, along with other crazy things here. We're exploring syntax ideas, as well as just putting broken things and making sure I can plot through it. But more interesting perhaps is my set of core definitions for the built-ins of the language. Now, I can only sort of parse this file, but I can plow through it and I can extract out these exported definitions. And imagine angle bracket functions are for compile time evaluation. Not sure how fully featured that's gonna be, but that's sort of the idea of the semantics, which in this case returns another function, which is my list of cases, where each is a case that provides some value. And else is a function that goes from true to some value. And each case is a pair from lazy claim to lazy value. Now the thing is, I actually can't either parse all of this syntax, nor have I implemented all the semantics yet. But this is me thinking through what semantics I want and I can at least extract out the definitions exist and match up references to them. And then meanwhile, this to operator just creates a pair in friendlier syntax that lets us see things in a way in our source that helps us to appreciate the branch we're doing. And in terms of grammar, these are the only keywords I have in the language. These sort of preposition-y kinds of things that actually affect the parsing process. Anything else that you might think of as a keyword is just a name that's looked up later during normal resolution process. And in my standard testing process, which I actually haven't demoed here today, but I did in my last video on Rio, I show that I generate text representations of various steps in the compiler process. And then I can compare those things. So let's look at what's actually happening here when we parse this branch call. Here's the parse tree, which contains all the text, branch, space, width, new line, i less than zero, this is the original version that I had that I started with, where I said message equals the branch call, i less than zero to string negative. When we go from this parse tree to the abstract tree, we now have a definition of message, call of branch, and this to infix becomes a call to the pair constructor, and the less than infix becomes a call to LT. So define message, branch, pair, LTI zero to negative. And then we need to resolve things like branch, pair, and LT to those core definitions, which we do in a later process. 
where I iteratively loop through resolving things and finding types for things, because all this is statically typed in a relatively heuristic fashion. So here, for example, the call to branch is type 98, where this refers to an index in the dense array that defines this tree. And if I change the contents of my source file, these indices change. So at some point, I might do an awesome representation where I invent labels for these things heuristically so they don't change as much when I add to and take away from the contents of my files. In any case, though, this branch, like we were discussing, needs to be of type string because that's what I'm going to in each case. So presumably got this is type string here, which, of course, we also see on these individual strings. Again, at the language level, I call it text, but I was already calling it string internally. We come down here to type 98, and we see it's type text, resolving to this word text in my core definitions. Notice it's in module one, which is the number I always give to the core definitions, and the place in the tree where it's defined in that module. So the question is, how did I infer this type? Well, technically, I suppose we should see that branch is generic on value, so it needs cases of those values. And then case is a pair from lazy claim to lazy value. But I haven't implemented any of this stuff for our type parameters. So I've hard coded for now the logic of inferring the type of a branch. So for any call, including a call to the branch function, I loop through things and I find the first case and I look at the type of the value of that first case. First case, last thing in the case. So this right here is a hard coded logic to figure out what the type of that branch is. So in the future, I need to change this to actually looking at those generic compile time functions and inferring the types out of them. I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go with compile time evaluation because I want it to compile very fast, but I need to do at least some things with those angle bracket functions. Again, hard-coded branch type inference for now. Then I need to generate wasm for my branches. And instead of actually having a function defined, such as I have for the print function, I instead recognize, oh, we're in module one. Yes, this is pretty hard-coded. I need to improve the organization here. But if I see a reference to the branch function, then I'm going to go to the translate branch logic, where I've already pulled that type out from the tree. Then I translate the individual cases, which turn into wasm if instructions and else. And my general rule here is, if you do have errors in your source, you just might have errors in your wasm, which is why at some point I definitely need to report to the user errors that they make in their Rio source code. And I'm not doing that yet. And then this is the kind of wasm I generate for that description function to check if your value is less than zero or greater than zero or the alternative, which is zero, we provide different string constants in each case. Now, at some point, I need to implement memory management, but for now, I just reference these constants directly down here, these data values that I've extracted and put onto my data section of my WASM file. And so that's the current state of things and how I go from a branch function into specialized handling of it to generate custom WASM from that. Oh, maybe I should also point out quickly this one. That's also equivalent. Or alternatively, that's equivalent. So I'm just calling the branch function with a list that with gives to us. All those are equivalent syntax. But in any case, my goal is to keep the compilation process very, very fast. And for next steps, I probably should get actual lists working beyond just use in a branch function call. And I probably want structs as well, as well as a bit more like math operations on integers. And following that, I probably need to get into memory management sooner than later, for which I plan to use a certain amount of reference counting, but ability to avoid it where you don't want it as well. And once I have that, lists and dynamic strings and so on make more sense. You can almost start using this for real code. And at some point after that, I'll probably get to those angle bracket compile time function handlings. And I imagine if I get far enough, a 1.0 for this language would be if I can actually interpret correctly the things I want here in my core definitions. By the time I can actually handle this with proper semantics, I probably have enough about for a 1.0 of this language. Anyway, I hope this has been fun. And I'm being distracted these days, so I might be discussing a different project next time. But if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.